Okay, so welcome product buds. Uh, today we are going to have a product matrix workshop. This workshop is targeted towards aspiring product managers or even young product managers who are just trying to learn how to navigate the world around product management. And as you guys might have heard, a lot of product management roles or even on the job, uh, it said that, okay, if you are a product manager, you should be at least aware about data or maybe good with data analytics or maybe just aware about how you work with data. And a major reason behind that usually is because as product managers, you need to know what is the success of your product or how do you identify anomalies in your product and make it better? How do you strategize your product through quantitative data? Imagine if you're a PM of a service which has 10 million users, you're not going to go and talk to all 10 million people. But what you can do is you can infer the data you have got and make decisions. So that is exactly what we are going to learn today. And moving along, our speaker today is Dr. Nancy Lee, who has interviewed hundreds of product managers. She has seen many mistakes candidates make and many success stories as well. And in this workshop, Dr. Nancy Lee will take us through a real life product matrix to help us master the product matrix concept and skills. And as some of you might already know, she is also a YouTuber and has been helping out a lot of uh, potential candidates with their job search and career uh, strategies. Uh, she was also the youngest engineering uh, PhD from Boston University and then transitioned into product management. And she's currently working as a director of product at Cox Communication. And she has also held leadership roles at Verizon and Shell Oil. So without further ado, Dr. Nancy, let's hear it. Thank you for joining us. Awesome. Thank you for having me, Darsh, and also all the product buzz, amazing organization. So excited to meet all of you guys. I think we did great introduction regarding doing a warm up, asking questions. So let me get started about today's main topic. I start to share my screen. And we still have people trying to join right now in the waiting room. Maybe we can start to let them in. So let me, can you, can you guys see my screen right now? Yep. Great, awesome, great. So all my talks, you have been to any of my talks before, you know, all my talks are very engaging. I tend to ask lots of questions. So I want you guys to warm up on the chat. When I ask questions, please engage and answer questions because I want to make sure my talk is going to tailor to all of you guys and address all your needs. Okay, let's get started. Okay, this talk, we're going to talk about how to master the product matrix interview without practicing hundreds of cases. My name is Dr. Nancy Lee. So the promise of the end of this talk is that I want you guys to feel confident in your job hunting process and using the right strategy to aid the product matrix interview and getting the product manager job. And make sure to stay until the end of this talk because I'm going to give you a free bonus of the PM resume template, which I used recently got four product manager offers during the pandemic. My template is structured very different from most people's. So you guys will get a copy of that towards the end of this talk. As we get started, because majority of you guys are millennials. So I want to remind all of you guys, turn off your distractions such as TikTok and Instagram because you guys easily get distracted nowadays. Uh, but make sure this 45 minutes talk is going to bring the best value of your job hunting process becoming a PM. So make sure this part is very uh, engaged and pay close attention to the framework I'm going to teach you. All right. So let me also ask you those questions. I have three reasons. I guess you're here today was because the first reason you feel frustrated that you try to apply for jobs online, but you never heard back from the recruiters. That might be the reason you're here today and put in the chat and type one. The second reason you're here today was because you already got some interviews. You want to learn how to land an offer during the pandemic with severe competition. If two is you, comment number two in the chat as well. The third reason you're here today was because you're new to product management and you just want to know about what is product matrix. So different levels of maturities in terms of product management interview process. So come on the chat one, two, or three. So I understand why you are here today. So I see lots of two, three, and Jenna, three, Saria, two, and three, uh, uh, Shichara saying two, 
yeah, I see a lot of Amaja said two. Yeah, I see two, three, two, three. Um, someone, you guys are one. Yeah, I see lots. That's awesome. If it's two, you guys are doing very well. You got some interview, you just want to land that offer. Three, of course, is more towards today's main topics about parametrics. That's awesome. Okay, great. So let's pay close attention to two and three for today's talk. We're definitely trying to touch number one as well. Okay, so no matter what reason you're here today, I will be fully support you because I have been there before and went through thousands of interviews and interviewing other candidates as well. I know how frustrating it could be, but if you use the right strategy and like today, I wanna make sure you guys can get ahead. Um, quick introduction about myself, who is Dr. Nancy Lee. So I am a director of product and YouTuber and also product management coach. I'm also a negotiation expert. Myself, I am an immigrant. I came from China. I am the first person actually graduate from college in my family. I'm also the only one who lives in the US right now. Oh, my hobby is ballroom dancers as well. Uh, most importantly, I want you guys to learn more about product management through my YouTube channel, Dr. Nancy Lee. You just Google Dr. Nancy, my, uh, the first 10 searches is all me that show up on Google so you can easily find me. All right, so something let's get started is that where I got started and why I said I felt exactly how you felt today. So actually I was a systems engineer at Shell Oil a few years ago when I got my PhD, but I never felt like career satisfaction in my uh, work at that time. As you can see, I was an engineer and working in the Shell Oil and in the oil field. However, the, the biggest challenge I see is that as an engineer, I never got to talk to customers, the very limited customer interactions and I was once always behind the counters and doing like data crunching and never understand what the meaning of the engineering of work I've done, what the impact I can bring to customers. Then I start to look into how can I make transition into product management because of the perfect combination between engineering and business. But when I started interview, people always said, oh, you don't have this product management experience and very difficult for me to get an interview. And frequently interviewers always say that you don't have it. Maybe it's the best you stay behind and continue to do what you're good at doing engineering work. You got a PhD, right? Just do engineering work. But what's in my heart was, they can't see the talent in me. I, I can do more, more than just doing the engineering work. I love interacting with customers, seeing a bigger picture. So I was very frustrated. Then I started to come up with alternative solution try to learn product management and trying to use the best networking strategy to open the doors, to make people give me an opportunity, show them that I know more than just engineering work and I can do multiple different things and have the right leadership, uh, leadership skills in me. And eventually within uh, three months, I got two product manager offers with no experience and successfully transitioned from an engineer into uh, product manager and my salary also went up by 30%. And after I became a product manager, actually my first product I launched with, uh, became the Mayor's Best Practice uh, Award, and which was very popular in the smart city space and continued to grow my career. Um, during the pandemic, I made another career transition because I really wanted to move into the leadership position, start to manage a team of senior product managers. So I started to apply for a director level job. So during the pandemic starting from April, I got four offers and three of those offers a director product and my salary also went up by 40%. So I became a director product within four years transitioning from an individual uh, uh, contributor. The entire process what I discovered is how would you be able to use the most effective way to get to the next level there's a differences between people who work hard and work smart. I focus on how can we work smart to get to the final destination much faster than other people. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to get there. And the one last thought is that why I'm teaching you today is my long-term goal is truly to build hundreds of high schools in China to teach kids from mid low income families entrepreneurship. And to be honest, I, my family wasn't wealthy at all. I, I don't think I deserve to be here today. I got very, very lucky, but lots of kids like me who came from mid-low-income families never got 
introduced to those kind of American education. So I really want to bring the entrepreneurship type of education back to China for people who's not able to afford. Um, but as you know, during the pandemic and also US and China relationship has been really, really bad recently. I don't think I just go back to China to open a nonprofit to help people from middle income families. There's no way I can do that today, but is there anything I can do today? Yes. So I discovered something very, very interesting because I started to manage senior product managers in Verizon and recently I became the director of product. I realized that I was the only female manager out of 100 people product management organization. As I interview more than 100 candidates uh, all of today, I realized that people who are like me are not on the decision-making table. Once you become a hiring manager, you understand that the way we select candidates, it's not just based on someone's like uh, how they answer the questions through the entire process, through networking, who comes into interview. Once a panel interview, how would you decide who can get an offer? Then I realized that I was the only one who advocate for people who are like me. And for people like us, we're not on the decision-making table. Then I felt so sad that no, one, uh, no wonder uh, there's not that many uh, product managers who deserve to be on the, uh, the decision-making table. They are not there. So therefore, I decided to teach people who are immigrants or minorities like me who want to become a product manager. Okay, so therefore, I put up my YouTube channel. So you can uh, take a screenshot of my YouTube channel where I help people transition from worker bee to a product manager and business leader. Um, you can, the QR code, once you take a screenshot, the QR code is going to take you to my YouTube channel. Um, recently, I also went live on YouTube and talk about how to get promoted as a uh, minority woman. And you can check out that video as well. So today we focus on job hunting. I totally understand it is crushing the confidence when people ask you, so what's your favorite product? What's the top three metric you can use to measure the success of the product? It's very difficult to answer. Then people will say, oh, you don't have it. You don't have the product sense. You don't understand how product built. It totally crashes the confidence. But today I want you to understand what the product, what's the best way for us to answer those questions by using this framework so that you can ace the product metrics into the questions. All right, so first of all, let me ask all of you guys this question. What's your background? So comment on the chat, what's your background in terms of what you study? Are you engineer? Are you in school? Uh, or are you in marketing? So comment on the chat, let me see what's your background. So I see, uh, Pavon said engineering, Angela engineering, Meta UX design. Oh, uh, Veen, you're also systems engineer. Yes, we're very similar. This is that you can definitely transition to a PM from systems engineer. Sharon, yes. Uh, uh, Rene, yes. I see lots of math, econ, yes, engineering background. Great. Wow. Um, FG and doing engineering, doing MBA right now. So we see, oh, surprisingly. I see more engineering focused audience than every other talks I have been to. Great. I also see marketing management. Yes, MK Marketing Management and Nika Economics. Those are very relevant to product management. I'll, I'm going to tell you how to combine it into the product role. Awesome. Great to see everyone's background. That's awesome. Great. Cool. So let's get into the product metrics, right? So, what are product metrics questions? Let's get started to understand this. So first of all, let's define product metrics. So product metrics means that it's a qualitative data point to track the success of your product. And for example, we will say the daily active users could be one of your metrics. Return on investment of your product could be a metric. The accuracy of facial detection of the AI product I built for smart cities years ago was also a product metric. There are like tons of product metrics we can uh, build and the track to measure the success of your product. So those are product metrics. So let's also dive deeper to understand why product metrics are important. Why these people ask you those questions in product management interviews, right? So product metrics is able to help product managers to make better product decisions. And um, for example, if for like 
two days ago, actually two days ago, I made the announcement of the product on my own product is coming out. And then there were people signing up, people asking questions. The most important question we, uh, as a product manager, were asked is, that, what do you mean your product launch was successful? So if you can give some like definition of the numbers we can track so that we can measure product launch was successful or not, then I can tweak my product marketing uh, scenarios and how to use the right messaging targets that a uh, different customer segment. That's why we need to design the product metric at the beginning of building the product. And the second reason product metrics is also very important is that is holding engineering team accountable. If lots of you guys actually are engineers uh, right now, uh, if you have built product with engineers before, you understand most of the product uh, in the engineering process, they always slip the schedule and you're supposed to build something with this kind of function and things are the pivot. So how would you hold your engineering team accountable if you can design the technical parametric to hold them accountable? So that's why it's very important. And we also need to gain stakeholder alignment because your boss will give you like right now I'm a director, I'm talking to someone higher up who decides how much a funding they give us next year. So how would you convince them? You bring a certain type of parametric saying that this is what I plan to hit in terms of number of users or revenues or return on investment. So therefore you need to give me this million much of money so that I'm able to execute and hit the goal. So that's how you gain uh, alignment as well. That's very critical. And to be honest, something that uh, most people don't talk about is a product manager's performance was also tied up to the product metrics. Give you a very interesting example. There is some, so Facebook has so many different product managers, like hundreds of them, maybe thousands of them, but which one get promoted? Which one get higher bonus than everybody else towards the end of your performance review season? Right now we are doing performance review very actively. So who does better, who does worse? You need to use the product managers, uh, the performance metric tied up to product metrics to see who is doing better. Um, so all this are totally tied up behind the scenes how decisions were made. All right, so what type of positions need product metrics, right? product manager, of course, product analyst, product marketing. And I have students actually going through this uh, different kind of interview process, especially product managers. Of course, you need to know product metrics, define the success of the product. Even people who is interviewing for product analyst position, they will ask you what kind of data do you need from the data scientists, what inside of those data. And product marketing, yes, as I mentioned earlier, doing product launch and measuring the outcome of the effectiveness of your marketing campaign, you need to track those product metrics as well. All right, so those are types of uh, positions you need to know what is product metrics, how to define them. And those are sample product metrics questions. All the questions I gave you are all real interview questions in fan companies. And so pay close attention to all the examples I, I gave you as well. So let's do this. For example, those parametrics question, typical ones are, what are the parametrics of Facebook events? What are the daily active users of LinkedIn? And they, they dropped. So what might go wrong? How would you fix it? And what kind of data would you collect from data scientists to improve ABCD issues? So all those questions belong to parametrics questions. All right, so the intention behind these questions is, do you have the PM experience? Do you have product sense? Can you start working on the product marketing and making uh, product management, making decisions starting from day one? Those are the real intentions behind those questions. It's not just the, oh, to tell me the, the number, what do you measure product success? You say daily active users. But if you really measure daily active users every day, only doing that, which means you're not a good product manager because we want to test what other metrics you can come up with, right? So if you already know how to design the product metrics, you can start to work on product management starting from day one. That's how you separate from mediocre candidate and top 1% candidate. All right, so now let's get into the product management uh, uh, metric 
framework and how would you answer those questions? This is the typical framework we use when we define the real world product management and uh, the product metrics. And for those product metrics framework, we call this RICE framework, the rich act conversion and engagement. In this case, you guys can take a screenshot and learn about this later on. Uh, I'm just walking through this framework in a very high level is that once I have my product launched in the market, how many people can heard about it? They're interested, about, uh, interested in it and how many of them actually went to my website to learn more about this, right? That's beginning from the reach of your product. And then next part is people heard about your product. How many of them actually start to engage with your product? If you use a typical product, you guys all use Instagram, right? Which means how many people start to comment uh, and use the new product feature of Instagram. Recently, Instagram used Reels, right? They introduced this, and how many swipes and how many reviews of those Reels feature on Instagram. So all those represent the, the engagement score, which came from many different aspects, sharing, comment, and, or different kind of like, on like searches, engage with your product. And then we move to the next session, which is convert. Convert is when we start to actually make money and convert them into the, the lower end of the sales funnel, which is, okay, now I have lots of people interested in sharing about my product, learning about this. Do they start to talk to my sales team to start to buy it? Of course, for Instagram kind of product, they sell ads. End users do not pay for anything, but they sell ads, right? So, but for most of products, if it's a, they usually introduce a freemium product. And for example, as an immigrant myself, I use a product called Grammarly, right? Trying to improve your, your grammar when you write uh, stuff. And Grammarly will be like, okay, people use this, they act about this, it's the majority of feature, at the entry level of the feature is free. But if you want to improve it, you start to pay more. So which means how many of those original engaged customers start to continue to learn more about this, engage with my sales teams or request a demo or directly start to subscribe and things like this. This is all starting to go into the conversion part. And then we move to the, uh, the final part of the product metrics when we design the success of the product is was the engagement, right? So how many of those start to, once you like send them emails or start to like use your product, do lots of people actually use your product every day or they just log in, they don't use it, right? Let's say Facebook. Guys, I don't think most of the guys, uh, you guys, including myself, still use Facebook as much as before, right? Let's say Facebook, right? Yes, Facebook has high conversion rate. Everybody has a, the very, very high like uh, login, right? Everybody has a Facebook account, but how many people will log into Facebook nowadays and really add new friends and share pictures on Facebook? My Facebook myself is almost dead, to be honest. I don't use Facebook, I use new, new, new things like you guys, right? So which means the engagement of Facebook started to go down. Yes, you have very successful, like many people sign up, but the engagement is slow, so that's, that's another metric to measure. Is your product really successful or not, right? So think about all the steps into measuring the success of your product from the beginning of the funnel all the way until the end, the engagement, right? That's how uh, I use this framework to track the success of my team as well. I use those uh, Instagram, Facebook as the example was because all of you are end users, so you understand it. But the product I make usually are enterprise products. I sell it to customers. The part that's important is that we need to convert, convert them into pay customers. And then the engagement was more measured towards, okay, so after they start, they pay, like usually they pay lots of money for enterprise product. They use it, how many of them like will convert, renew the contract? How many of them use it and have very high success rate? How many of them will have like um, ticketing, right? We want to have less ticket, but more higher customer success rate. So we 
we use the same framework to track different products. So therefore I recommend all of you guys to not just for the purpose of applying the framework, but really think about specifically how your end user use it. And, and then this framework will come to like life later on. Cool, all right. Now, let me give you some specific examples about the problematics we use in our day-to-day -day work. There are two main product metrics. I, I told you the framework, but those are the things you can start to pick up later on once you become a product manager or during the product management interview process. There is a list of example technical metrics such as scalability of your product. For example, I build the AI system help cities reduce car crashes, right? Is my product scalable? And what the accuracy of the facial detection, or may not be facial, for, for my product, we don't have facial detection, we detect cars, right? What the accuracy of the car detection or a system uptime for, for smart cities product, it's pretty important that you cannot just hand some kind of product in the cities to detect car crashes, and systems only up for a certain amount of time and, and down for a certain amount of time. Right? System uptime is important. And what sometimes you talk about the, the web loading time and time of deployment, reliability, database response time. So all of this goes into the technical parametrics questions. Now, business metrics. I think for business metrics should be easier for you guys to understand and learn about it. For example, for business metrics, you can think about the North Star KPI, number of early adopters, the revenues, or for Facebook, to be honest, the North Star metric should be after they log in to Facebook, do they really use it and engage it, right? So pick the most important metrics as a business metric for your North Star metrics. Daily active users. Everybody know daily active users. I don't think this is the main topic for us to discuss today. This is one of the metrics people track, but we, we track way more than this. Revenue, conversion rate, or the specific impact to customers. And this is the most important part for all of you guys to understand. You cannot just use the framework I told you earlier and directly say, oh, I'm tracked the scalabilities and the accuracy, daily active users. If you, if you say the same thing for any product together, is wrong, you cannot get the job offer. You need to understand what the specific impact relevant to customers, right? So let me ask you this question. Uh, you should think about this. You might have heard this answer in different places before. For my uh, smart city product to help cities to reduce car crashes, what do you think is most important business metric I need to track? So come on the chat for the AI product I use for cities, I build for cities to reduce car crashes. What do you think is the most important thing I need to track? Just one thing without, don't tell me data active users. Okay, what do you think the number one most important thing that's relevant to my product I just told you? Put it in the comments. So let me, uh, let me know what do you think is the most important metric I need to track for my product using AI to help cities reduce car crashes. It's good to uh, check if you guys are listening or not. <laughs> All right, so I see some numbers here. Uh, Priya said number of car crashes predicted, actual crashes detected. Uh, I see uh, Rachi said number of car crashes, how much they have reduced. Uh, reducing car crashes, car accident reduction rate, number of car crashes. Yes, those are all great questions. And in real life, as I mentioned, the product I launched was awarded as a mayor's best practice. So why they like it was because our KPI, the most important parametric is, the, you're right, the reduction in crash rate is very important. I need to understand the crash rate before my product and after product. If this clearly reduced, I'm getting an award. So that's the most important KPI for the real life like product. Uh, if you go to my LinkedIn pro, uh, profile, um, you should be able to find a news article I linked underneath my work experience to learn more about the product, but that's an example, real life example. Okay, 
cool. You guys, you guys get it right. So therefore, when people ask you, what do you think the parametric of ABC product, you need to think really hard. Don't just say the data like user revenue, that's too generic. Say something specific to the product as well. Okay, now let's do a live example, okay? So the best way to learn is by doing it and with guidance. Today I'm your mentor, so I'm guiding you through this process. Let's give you a live example. So let's do this very quickly. So in this live example is that you can see my screen and those are the interview process. I'm going to give you an interview question going through this framework. Um, how would you pick up the right metric to answer this question? What are the metrics of Facebook event? Uh, I know most of us don't use Facebook anymore, assuming you still log into Facebook. So just say like introduction with Facebook events. So during the pandemic, if you still want to hang out with your friends, sometimes they have virtual event or ours event, the host event on Facebook, people can register, RSVP, that's Facebook event. Right. So when we talk about this interview question, what do you think is a success metrics, product metrics, a Facebook event product? Step one of this interview framework is you need to talk about the mission of the company. In this case, it's Facebook. Facebook specifically really like to talk about their mission. And I put it here, for example, Facebook mission is bring the world closer together. Yeah, we start to talk about the mission of the product before you dive into that. And then you need to identify the users. Who are the users of Facebook event? Okay, so come on the chat. Who are the Facebook event users? Do not read my slides. Just, just think about it and put on the chat. Who are the users? Segment the customers first before you tell the metrics. Who are the users? I see people already answering questions yet. We need to identify users first before you pick out the metrics. That's the trick. Very important trick because you don't know users or you miss some segment of the users, it's likely you're not able to come up with the right metrics, right? So as people come out on the chat and saying that, okay, attendees, organization, end users, I wouldn't say end users, um, everybody is an end user, you see what I'm saying? So too generic, change end user to something else. So I see uh, organizer, admin, uh, organizer event, uh, speakers, attendees, millennial event, attendee host, uh, very cool. Um, Priya said mentors who hold workshop or Facebook groups members. Yeah, promoters, great. Okay, all great answers. I like that you guys start to think more than just people going into attending the event, right? So for Facebook, especially for this case, there's always two groups of segment. There are people attending event. There are event organizers. Some of you guys, you call that the admin or group organizer. At here, we just call them organizer. We don't want to break them into group or group or mentors or put a bus. You, you, you don't do that that way. You just say organizers and event attendees, two main things. Um, for any other product, you do the same thing. Pick, figure out what are the segmentation first, and then you come up with the mission-related product metrics. As I as an example, I gave you earlier for the smart cities product, mission-related product metric is I want to help city reduce car crashes. Right? You guys came out with the metrics with me together. For this one, what do you think? is the most important metrics for both groups of the customers. We talked about who earlier, right? Attendees, even organizer. So comment on the chat, what the most important metrics that's aligned with Facebook mission? Of course, I think Facebook mission is making money, but they said their mission is bringing the world closer together. So don't, don't give me the revenue revenue mission. But in reality, my KPI is, is revenue, to be honest, in, in my real life, in any product I built before. But for this case, because they said the mission is not revenue. So tell me other, tell me other uh, um, 
uh, metrics, the important, most important metrics aligned with the mission. Okay, we see someone uh, put it as number of event created, that's pretty good. Organizers and attendee number, number event scheduled. Uh, I see people come and connecting people while event, that's a very good one. Uh, uh, and I'm going to elaborate it on regarding connecting people while event. We don't, we don't put that at the first layer, mission related metrics, we use that later on, but it's a very good one. I also uh, see people putting on the number event created, people involved, number of organizers and event user number of time shared. That's a good one. Uh, Pavan, we're going to put number of time shared later on. Uh, but not in the most important mission related metrics. Right? Mission related metric with the most important, which one is the most important, right? Uh, it's not shared at this moment, but I like you guys start to think about it. That's really great. Number of attendee, uh, number of success event, number of response engagement, RSVP. Uh, the spe okay, so uh, Latinas for the RSVPs is a good one. We don't put that the mission related one yet. So think about this. If you are new product manager for Facebook, your salary, your, your salary is fixed. Your bonus, your performance is tied up to this. Would you, would you say the most important thing is the number of RSVPs? If RS, RSVP is low, you're gonna have less bonus. Would you wanna tie that to your performance? It's likely no, right? So you were tied up to something else. At least you measure in a high level what's something you at least can tell the product is success, uh, is successful or not. And here we can see that this way is, for example, from from an organizer uh, aspect, you can say how many like uh, events being organized per month on Facebook, or you do this way, a better way to say, I see the people putting a number of event or attendees, right? So I would do this way, the mission related high level one, I would say from organizers perspective, how many organizers are there on Facebook who organize event at least once per month or once per quarter? So you can see how many people get in to create event. Now, most interesting part is everybody's thinking, what about people attending event? What do I measure people attending event uh, from their perspective? If we measure the number of events, total number of events, I, I, I see the number of events, I don't see you guys to say per what, per period. Why per period is important was because, let's, let me tell you, right? let's say Facebook, very big, big. Let's say so Facebook have like a five million event. If I just tell you a number of five million event, do you think it's good or bad? Right? It's it's hard to tell. It's five million higher, high, higher, low. Sounds really high, but for Facebook, I don't know, you know. So at least I need to break it down by period. If I say if Facebook has five million event per day, do you think it's higher? Low? Oh, that's high. Product sense, okay, that's really high. All right, five million per day is very high. If you're telling Facebook has five million per year, sounds kind of low, right? So therefore you, you need to put a bond, right? Number event or something per what? Per month, put a time bound. I like to do per month. You know, people don't really organize daily event, they do monthly event, or you guys do weekly event. Like per, I usually do per month. But I think the better answer besides per month is, yeah, someone put a per user, per returning user, I like it. I, I like the answer was per attendee is important because if I say Facebook has five million event per month, is high or low, it's good or not because tied my to my performance bonus, you know, promotion or not. Um, but how to really see that it's, it's a good or bad? You divide it by attendees or divide by active users, right? Number of event per active users or per attendees per month, which is, let's say, um, every Joe attend two Facebook event per month. That's high. Think about it. Anybody attend two Facebook event per month? That's pretty high. So you should track this as, as my bonus. If I can increase 
the attendee like number per month to I attend two average or attend two Facebook event per month. I'm getting a promotion. Hey guys, this is clearly a promotion, right? So bring it to something that you think is measurable and that's give a bond, the time bond and the part that you can divide it by daily after user is a good way to do it. And I wouldn't just give a total number, right? Total number usually doesn't work, especially for big, uh, uh, like a product like Facebook right now. So this is a, when we talk about the mission related high level product metrics, you use that. But all of you guys put on the site, talk about, uh, so the number, yes, the end, yes, number of event per month per user, yes. I, this is my favorite answer, number of event per month per user, that's a good one, yes. If you start a new product, you may just do number of event per platform when you get started. But once your users start to go big, you need to do per user because Facebook is too big, right? That's a good one. So I see you guys comment on the chat, which gave lots of good intel towards, oh, what about the RSVP rate or the size of event, number of attendees of those events, right? Uh, oh, hold on. And um, that's come to the next product health question. Now, now here, let me pick up this. Identify North Star metrics is that you need to pick among all the examples you gave me, the pick the most important, the metrics as a North Star metric. The product can only have one North Star metric, maximum two, you know? You cannot have multiple metrics. They all need to get aligned with the most important mission of your product, identifying North Star metrics. And now let's go to the, the fun part, which you guys come up with many ideas, like RSVP rate and different parts. This all go to put a health related metrics. Now think about this, the part of health metrics is that something can qualify your product is popular or not, and whether it's solving the problem. We had high level number of event like uh, per month, per attendee go per, uh, into the Facebook event, right? Those are high level, sounds good, that's pretty good. but. As I mentioned regarding the, the rice framework I teach you guys, it's like they go, do they engage? That all go to the product health metrics. Yes, you have event out there. What is, what's the size of the event? Are they big, are they small? Did they make new friends? What's the user engagement? Did they share? Some of you guys post really good one, which is uh, did they make new friends? Yeah, exactly, right? You're, su you're supposed to make new friends at the uh, at events. That's also Facebook mission, making more people making uh, friends, right? So all those goes into the product health relate metrics. And uh, all the, the good ones you guys talk about the activity. So let me, let me ask you guys this question. So from now on, list the product health metrics you can repeat what you said earlier, but I want you to think deeper about, yeah, people create event, people go to event, but how to measure is the product healthy, is it popular or not? Put in the comments, what are the things you think should go to the product health? So is this product really solving the problems? Is it popular or not? So put in the chat, um, what do you think is the product health related uh, metrics? MPS, ratio people sign up to attend. I wouldn't do MPS directly. You need to be very specific, guys. Always do something very specific. Don't tell me data active users. That's mediocre answer. We want to get become the top 1% candidate and get an interview, right? Be smart is the difference between work hard and work, work smart. Um, so let's work smart here. Positive reviews is good. Number of user engagement and active users uh, is even shared. Yeah, that's a good one. Number of friend requests to send with an invite before, during, and after event. That's a really good one. All right. So let's see what else we see. Increase, decrease rate of number event per month. That's a good one. Uh, user with join number of uh, interested, uh, attending. So let me. I, I read lots of answers here. Let me tell you how to improve your answer. Most of those answers are, are pretty good in terms of creativities. Let me tell you how to improve this. So for example, we talk about the, the review is good, right? So most important thing is that the user engagement. 
But when you measure the user engagement, they can come from many different ways in terms of shared event. Someone asked a shared event, right? Shared event, making friends and likes. So I will group lots of those engagement into engagement score in terms of number of shares, number of likes, the people post in the event page, right? People also share pictures before and after during this event. That's, I group them into engagement score, right? Um, yes, people, Paul talk about, yeah, user interaction, like, share, that's, that's a good one together. Now, some of you guys also talk about, let me see the, yes, there's another group of uh, the parametrics I think you guys post very well is like friend requests sent within during and after event. Yes, how many new friends did you make through this event? That, that's a good one. And at the same time, the friend request and also has something to do with the size of the event, right? So you guys, some, some of you guys in the number of attendees, the different things. Um, usually in the interview questions, they will ask you, do you think the size of the event matters? That's mean that the, the bigger the attendees, the better, that, that will be an interview questions come up in the interview, very likely. You just need to defend your position. Some of you guys uh, will say, yes, the attendee, the bigger, the better. Some of you guys say that, you know what, for Facebook event, like, like our event today, how many people we have, 90 people, yeah? Um, so for event like 90, it's median, small event is 10, big event is like 2000, right? So this means that as a Facebook product manager, the bigger the event, the better. So I just need to push people to thousands of people's event, which is more likely to, for example, political, political campaign event that's really big, right? So do I want them to go really big or median or small? In my opinion, I think the size doesn't matter it's more the engagement, but it but there's no right or wrong answer in this in this product health metrics. It's more towards as long as you can define it, de uh, defend your position. In my opinion, if I say size doesn't matter, is I I would prefer engagement. Then you list engagement. So therefore, I would list multiple different product health metrics. You can say if you think size is important, you say. The, the, the number of attendees, or you can also engagement score. I think engagement score is definitely very important, right? All of this, making new friends. Um, and, and also someone also said technical one. Yeah, the event, the up time and technical aspect of the product is also very important, which we put it down below. So all of those you can list there in terms of is my product popular or not? And active users, yes, we always do daily active users. I think this by default, but you need to be very specific. Is daily active users using my event by sharing? You need to define your daily active users. It's not, is it log in as daily active users? Mm, I would think people not only log in and they start to either comment, like, or share or our RSVP of my event is considered daily active users. And those users, the number of these people are very important. I need to track it. So you need to define it very product specific. Do not just give me a big number, data of users, and you don't define it very well. And then, then you'll mediocre answer again. We want to get to top 1% candidate. Uh, something very quick is I will towards the end of this talk, you should talk after you list all the, all the different like metrics out there, you talk about risk and what kind of risks you might, you might encounter for this product. And um, counter metrics, counter metric is, is, is an advanced concept, which means today most people will, will pick one most important part, but you need to pick a counter metrics in case people put too much weight onto your North Star metrics. And for example, your North Star metric could be lifetime value of a product, but your counter metric could be customer acquisition cost, which means if my lifetime value of a product is $100, but my customer acquisition cost is $200, that's bad, right? So you, you need to pick something that holds the North Star metrics very accountable. So you pick something just in case the North Star metric was put too much weight, but you, you touch the boundary of the true success of product. So you also list the counter metrics. And as the end, you also talk about the cannibalization 
right? So yeah, so many people use Facebook event, and then which means fewer people go to Facebook groups, right? So this will this will hurt your your your, your peers at Facebook, their product metrics. You need to talk about cannibalization in your interview as well, so that you can get a better answer. So this is towards the end that, as I mentioned earlier. Um, I have a product uh, product manager interview template you guys can use. I also make a YouTube video talk about how to use this template. You guys can take a screenshot and download the template yourself and watch my YouTube video to learn about um, how to create the uh, product management interview. We want to say five minutes left towards the end. Um, I also have a product management accelerator program. You can go to my website, drnancy.com and use the code PRODUCTBUS to get $100 off. Um, go to drnancy.com to learn more as well. Um, to learn, you have any questions, feel free to email me. Um, you can take a screenshot of this page and contact me later on on Instagram. The best way to actually to contact me is through Instagram because there are too many people emailing me. Uh, so email is also good. Uh, uh, Instagram and email is good. So finding those uh, channel to contact me is great. Uh, email me at drnancy.com as well. Oh, I have two uh, community groups. Uh, Changemaker Facebook group and mock interview groups and on LinkedIn, one on Facebook, one on LinkedIn. You guys can uh, take a screenshot and scan the barcode and join my groups later on as well. So we're towards the end of this talk. I want to save time to answer questions for all of you guys. So please go to Slido. I think you guys are collecting questions right now and I will hand it over to our host so that we can answer questions. And sorry, we went a lot in terms of giving examples of the framework and hopefully it's very helpful. And feel free to check out my YouTube channel to learn more about different part of product management. I'm gonna hand over back to Darsh Rena. Well, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Nancy. That was a great talk. Even I feel uh, I kind of learned a lot. Um, something that I wasn't aware of was the counter strategy that you talked about. So thank you so much. And for our audience, uh, type in in the chat from a scale of uh, one to 10, how much did you like the talk that Dr. Nancy gave? And in the meantime, we'll be moving over to Slido uh, to kind of go over the questions submitted by audience. If you have any outstanding questions and feel they haven't been uh, submitted here, feel free to go to Slido and submit your questions. So to start off our first question, Dr. Nancy is, uh, can you explain how you determine a North Star matrix? Like, as you said, there are different matrix you can choose a North Star, but what is your thought process when you think of selecting the North Star matrix? Uh, very good question. The way to select a North Star matrix is to identify the matrix that truly align with the mission of the product, the problem you're trying to solve. Like the Smart Cities example I, I gave you guys. Align to mission, that's your North Star. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. So uh, another question is for interviews, do you think what matrix you choose can make or break your interview uh, from a lab? And I think this is in the context of like, let's say your interview is not going that well and somehow the matrix that you choose are very interesting and kind of impresses the interviewer. Do you think that could change uh, the prospect of your interview? Yeah, I think totally. I think totally. Yeah, it's truly show that you're thinking like a product manager even before uh, you get a product manager job. Yeah, all those are very important. But I, I do think this can uh, get by high scores for you to put some weight, mm -hmm. you know, final score getting offered. Okay, so for everybody listening, maybe concentrating on matrix isn't that bad. <laughs> So how do we measure matrix that are qualitative in nature and not quantitative? Oh, good, good question. Um, you, yes, there are lots of things it's hard to measure, but you need to think about creative ways to measure them. Um, many different things like emotions, the happiness of product of your customers, you know how to measure happiness. As a product manager, can you use a different way to measure they're happy or not? So I wouldn't give a happiness score. I would do something towards, do they have five-star review, right? So those can be reflected as happiness. So find a different metric that's relevant, but can be quantifiable. Mm -hmm. 
makes sense and there are techniques out there like sentiment analysis and often i feel as a product manager you work with a data scientist or some analyst to kind of get that info and i'm pretty sure there are a lot of nlp techniques out there so that is something as dr nancy said you can quantify your qualitative data so our next question is what are some creative ways to measure a metric when there are no certain ways to measure it Uh, you need to design a way to measure it or you need to change your metrics. Mm -hmm. you, you, you really need to make your metrics very measurable and, until you are able to figure that out. So yes, it's difficult. You change one to make it being very measurable. For example, the examples I gave you guys, everything's very measurable. Have a data scientist measure that today? So I'm not going to design something that's impossible to measure in my interview, which also a sign that you don't know how to do product metrics in your real work. So it's just that that's a wrong answer. Just don't bring up that kind of answer. We don't use that in the in the world uh, real world scenario either. Got it. So our last two questions. Uh, one of them is uh, for enterprise product interviews. How would you answer such questions? Ask about the enterprise goals or put assumptions before you begin. Ah, for enterprise interviews, uh, uh, interview question, I will ask questions. I will ask that, so what was a goal of your, this product as a company? And they will tell you, sometimes they will say, you can make assumptions, then you make assumptions. For enterprise product, I, I will ask. For example, my product is I, I launched several like new products from scratch. So our early goal is how many users we have. And later on, we turn into revenue goal. So you can ask them upfront. Of course, if they ask you to guess, then you make assumptions. Yeah, that makes sense. And as a PM, like one of your good qualities should be like asking the right questions. So I think that's relevant here. Yeah. Um, another question we have is any tips for how to specify matrix? What's the thought process in getting down to a specific user engagement matrix, for example? Okay, so the process in getting down to specific user engagement was assuming you are using the product. Mm -hmm. What is the user journey in terms of using your product today? Then you wear their shoes, then it's, oh yeah, Facebook event, I will attend, I will share pictures, I will make friends, I will like, Assuming you are the users and they're very easy for you to think about those metrics. Of course, I've done hundreds of this interview questions before. It's faster for me, but you can do this exercise yourself as well. Yep, exactly. And I guess in an in interview setting, uh, it's valuable uh, for your interviewer to see that, oh, you were able to come up with a customer empathy to track down your correct matrix. So yep. last question for the event is, should we mention technical matrix in a PM interview? And I'm guessing the context here might be like something that is too technical, maybe for a cloud product or something that you're not sure whether it's understandable by interviewer, but you think it's relevant to track. Would you advise? Yes. The answer is yes. And even for Facebook product, event product, we have a technical metrics, the small, right? But especially when you make comprehensive technical product, AI product I built before. Now I, I build edge computing product, very technical product. You do need to talk about the technical metrics as well. So it's very product focused. See, again, depending on type of product, you bring out different metrics. Yeah, and I guess this would be a good uh, domain to show your technical expertise as well, especially if you're going for a more experienced role where you are not expected to be like a new grad that they're looking for you to teach but rather they want you to come up with your own skills to their team or something like that. Yeah. So that's about uh, it. This was our last question. Uh, once again, thank you so much, Dr. Nancy Lee for coming in and talking to our community about product metrics, because uh, I personally learned a lot. And I also know a lot of people in our community who are also not here today would find this super useful. So drop down in the chat and use clap reacts. If you enjoyed Dr. Nancy's, talk because it's a Sunday and she's a working professional. So it takes a lot to come out here and talk to people like us. And last but not the least, if you liked uh, this event, if you liked uh, Dr. Nancy's talk, please uh, make sure to 
write a post on LinkedIn so that you can share this content even with your followers and also create your personal brand in the process where one recruiter comes at your profile and sees one day that, okay, this person has written about matrix, about product sense that does make an impact. It may not be like a immediate impact, but it might be like any other thing, like a solitude impact. Any last words, Dr. Nancy? Um, I wish all of you guys become a PM soon. And I know the journey to PM is different for everybody. Somebody can get an offer of within a week. The shortest time since a week, the longest time, you know, like three months, sometimes even longer. But the key is that have your very clear goal. If you're determined to become a PM, take all the resources you can to become a PM. Everybody can become a PM if you put your mind into it. Exactly. Thank you so much, everybody, for coming out here on a Sunday. And I hope all of you have a great weekend ahead. Great. Thank you very much for having me.